Okay, in the same vein as uh, section 11, the, uh, section 13 of the first essay on page 44 begins, let us return to the problem of the other origin of the good, of the good as conceived by the man of resentiment, demands its solution. That lambs dislike great birds of prey does not seem strange, only it gives no ground for reproaching these birds of prey for bearing off little lambs. And if the lambs say, if the lambs say among themselves, these birds of prey are evil, and whoever is least like a bird of prey, but rather its opposite a lamb, would he not be good? There is no reason to find fault with this institution of an ideal, except perhaps that the birds of prey might view it a little ironically and say, we don't dislike them at all, these good little lambs. We even love them. Nothing is more tasty than a tender lamb. To demand, In other words, Nietzsche says, to demand of strength that it should not express itself as strength, that it should not be a desire to overcome, a desire to throw down, a desire to become master, a thirst for enemies and resistances and triumphs, is just as absurd to demand of weakness that it should express itself as strength. So again here, Nietzsche is reiterating his two basic conceptions of of how people fare in life. Either you're strong or you're weak, and that's that's just natural. And notice what he's saying here too. He's He's saying not all people are equal. And of course, he's not talking about the way we use that term now uh, in terms of all people are equal uh, in dignity. He doesn't think that dignity exists. That's a metaphysical concept. If you think about it, where is dignity? What does it mean to say human beings possess dignity? Is dignity a physical concept? Could, you know, if you were to cut me open, would dignity fly out? No, of course not. Human beings aren't equal in dignity, but they're also not equal in, in performance or action. Think about this. Um, Nietzsche wants to extend this analogy uh, to the whole of, of, of nature. Namely, uh, for example, I remember when I was a kid uh, playing basketball, there were certain kids who were just good at basketball. They, I mean, you know, they play, played longer and things, but there were certain athletic kids and there were certain unathletic kids. Not everybody was equal in basketball. Some kids played more, some kids played less. Uh, I was okay, but my best friend was just phenomenal. And he was, no matter what, he was always better at me than basketball. We were unequal. And I would be lying to myself if I thought th that we that everybody was equal in basketball or everybody was equal in sports. Now Nietzsche wants to extend that all the way down to life itself. Some people are just powerful. Some people are just weak. And some people are birds of prey and some people are lambs. Some people are born in a position of power or from a, from a psychological stance of power and others from a psychological stance of weakness. And that determines their perspective or their attitude on life. And so uh, this is pretty, uh, pretty pessimistic view of the world for Nietzsche. No, notice what he's critiquing here. He's saying, why should you demand, how can you demand even, that someone who's a bird of prey, someone in a position of strength, should care about lambs, right? No, they're natural... Uh, birds of prey and their natural uh, predators. And so Nietzsche, again, is subtle, subtly here critiquing this Judeo-Christian idea of concern for victims, of compassion for the weak, of compassion for the poor, the orphan, the widow. Remember, we began with this saying, if these two perspectives are here, why should we naturally assume that we should care about the weak, about the lambs, and not assume the position of uh, the bird of prey? Who is ipso facto that is necessarily a victimizer why do we side with the victims and not the victimizers? Nietzsche says again, 2,000 years of catechesis, that is instruction in Judeo-Christianity. It's just something for us to think about here, that if we buy this, this moral, morality, namely concern for victims or concern for the weak, which I personally do as a Christian, if we buy this, why do we buy this if we're not religious? And Nietzsche would say, well, you just, you just, you have a hangover of Christian culture because it's not intuitively obvious in the natural world, in the animal world, and we're a part of the animal world, and to think we're not a part of the animal world is, is self-denial. It's not intuitively obvious in the animal world that you should care about the weak and care about victims. That is a uniquely human concern.